Good morning. Today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. So many features of the Passover Seder are present, as the Talmud says, in order that we should ask why. We want to elicit questions, especially from children. So there are things that are out of the ordinary, out of order, that we don't normally see, in order that we will ask why. One particular peculiar object is the central placement of an egg. It is virtually universal to have an egg on the Seder plate to remind us of the carbon Chagiga, the sacrifice offered on Passover in the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. And this egg is usually next to the roasted bone, sometimes called the shank bone, which is present to remind us of the carbon Pesach, the Passover sacrifice, prepared as the centerpiece of the Seder meal when the Beit HaMikdash was standing. So, there were two sacrifices offered, the carbon Pesach and the carbon Chagiga. That's the second one. So, with the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash, almost 2,000 years ago, we have neither of these two offerings today, but we place a reminder of each offering on the Seder plate. But the question is, the roasted bone appears an appropriate reminder of a carbon, which was roasted meat, but why do we choose an egg to remind us of the second carbon, which was also roasted meat? Why an egg? So the classic answer that is given is that an egg is a food eaten by mourners. Traditionally, at the first meal after coming home from the cemetery, they eat a meal that consists of hard-boiled eggs and other foods, after the burial, just as they're beginning to sit Shiva. And when we remember the absent sacrifices of the Seder, we feel a sense of mourning. We feel a sense of loss that the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed and is not yet rebuilt, and consequently we no longer have these sacrifices, only the symbols that remind us of them. And since reminding the sac remembering the sacrifices saddens us, the food that we use is a food for mourners, an egg. But that just leads to the next question. Why is an egg a food for mourners? So to answer that, let's turn to another question. You may not have realized this about the Jewish calendar, but it is true. And once you realize it, it's quite striking. Why is it that the first day of Passover always falls on the same day of the week as Tisha B'Av? This year, Passover begins Monday night and Tuesday. This year, I haven't looked at the calendar yet, but I can assure you, Tisha B'Av this year is Monday night and Tuesday. Tisha B'Av is the day that we commemorate the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash, the exile of the Jewish people. Why do we connect that thematically by having the same day of the week as Pesach, which is a celebration? Well, one reason is to thematically connect these two dates to remember that the redemption from Egypt celebrated on Pesach was not perfect. It wasn't complete. Because although it led to the Jewish people leaving Egypt and coming to Israel and building a bank to Mikdash, a holy temple in Jerusalem, it was later destroyed. The imperfection of Passover leads ultimately to the destruction of Tisha B'Av. So there is a connection between Pesach and Tisha B'Av, which is symbolized by their sharing the same day of the week. Now, according to this reason, the presence of the egg, a food of mourning on the Seder plate, is a reminder 
that although on Passover we celebrate redemption and freedom, it didn't last. And it ended in destruction and mourning. This answer, which is true, is disturbing. And it's demoralizing because it contradicts the spirit of celebration that is supposed to pervade Pesach. But there is a second reason suggested by the egg which conveys a very different message and a message that is especially meaningful this year. Why is an egg a food eaten by mourners? Because it is round. So what? The Ramah, Rabbi Moshe Isselis, explains that a round food symbolizes that life is a circle that returns. Death is temporary, and the neshama, the soul, unlike the body, is eternal. Now, this is the message that we repeat and emphasize throughout the mourning process starting at the burial, where mourners say a special form of the Kaddish prayer, which begins with the words, Yiskadal Yiskadash, may God's name be exalted and sanctified in the world which will be renewed, and where God will revive the dead and raise them up to eternal life. The ultimate consolation of death is that the next stage after it is life. Death is not the last stage. And this brings us to a completely new understanding of the egg's presence at the Seder. We don't have the carbon because the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. But we have a reminder of the missing carbon, an egg, An egg reminds us that even though the Beit HaMikdash is not yet rebuilt and we as a people are still in mourning, and of course we this year are in a state of mourning and loss and pain and trauma, the egg reminds us it will be rebuilt. It will come back. Redemption is promised to us. The roundness of the egg conveys that which is lost is not lost forever. We will have it again. We have an egg at the Seder not because it's a food eaten by mourners, but because it is a food that gives consolation to mourners. The egg at the Seder, especially this year, should give us comfort and confidence in our future and in the ultimate rebuilding of Jerusalem and all its physical and spiritual glory and the safety and security of our brothers and sisters in Israel, especially those fighting, especially those held captives, And for all of us suffering from anxiety and anti-Semitism, the egg is the message for us that we will have that peace and security and safety again. Rabbi Yaakov Yitzchak Horowitz was a great Hasidic master. He was known as the Chose Melublin, the seer of Lublin. He died in 1815. One of his sons came from some distance to claim his share of the inheritance, and all that was left to him was his father's wall clock that chimed every hour. On his way home, the sun stopped at an inn. It began to rain. The roads became unpassable. And he had to stay there for several days longer than planned. 
and he did not have enough money to pay the innkeeper. And therefore he left behind his father's clock in place of the payment. Many years later, a famous rabbi traveled and stopped at the same inn and heard the chimes. He saw the clock and he excitedly turned to the innkeeper and said, where did you get that clock? The innkeeper told him about the sun and why he had left it there. The rabbi told the innkeeper that he recognized the clock and that it had belonged to the famous Chose Lublin. The innkeeper said to him, How did you recognize the clock? It's just a clock. And the rabbi replied, Every other clock, when it strikes the hour, it has its own peculiar and characteristic message. The chime calls out one hour closer to death. But the clock of the Chosem Lublin had a message different from any other clock in the world. Its chimes called out one hour closer to redemption. The message of the egg on our Seder plate this year is to remind us that despite what is happening around us and despite what we feel, despite what we have lost, the egg reminds us that we are one hour closer to the ultimate redemption. My friends, I wish you a good day. And I look forward to seeing you all soon in person.